Hi, my name is Bree, and I have the privilege of serving as Chief of Staff here at Transformation Church. At TC, our vision is to represent God to the lost and found for transformation in Christ. And we just want to say thank you so much for tuning in from wherever you're watching from. If you haven't already, be sure to like and subscribe. We believe that God has a word just for you. So let's jump into today's message. It is a beautiful season here at Transformation Church. It's Crazy Faith Offering Sunday. And um, some of y'all are like, why are they cheering for an offering? <laughs> um, we have found in this, this community that at the time of year when most people are very concerned about what they're going to get for their kids and for their family and for their household, we have decided to be concerned about the hosh, heart posture that we can align ourselves with to see what we can give, to be more like Christ. For Christ, for God so loved the world that he did what? He gave. That was the characteristic of Jesus that wasn't dependent on a paycheck, a time of year, or the economy. He made a decision that my posture, the posture of the kingdom, is generosity. And so um, today starts, everybody say starts. Our crazy faith offering. We understand, like people, are like I, I didn't know I want to do it today. I da, da 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 Listen, listen, listen. There's no pressure or compulsion. We've been telling you for about eight weeks that that this is what we're gonna do. If you're new to the community, this is your first time. You're like, I didn't know that we're doing this. Where's the building fund? Where's the project? None of it. This is not in response to something we need to get. Oh God. In church so many times, it's like, let me show you the nice, shiny thing we're going to do. And there's nothing wrong with that. But, but I just found that my motive wasn't always doing it because God said so. It was doing it because I know what we're going to get after we give. And, and there's a part of our Christian faith, just like when you're parenting kids, it's because I said so. Not because you know what's going to happen after you do it. It's just... I ask you to do something. Generosity is one of those things that works selfishness out of our heart and makes us more like God. And right now, if you're wrestling with this idea, do they know what time of the year it is? Do they know that the two days ago was the first? Do they know that? Yeah, we know all of that. But the Bible says that God gives seed to those who have already purposed in their heart to sow. So many times when people say they don't have anything to sow, it's because they never purposed in their heart to actually give a seed. They're waiting for the harvest to be able to sow. And God never shows up with a harvest. He shows up with a bunch of seeds. And so in this atmosphere, I want to build your faith today. As we are in week 15 of a series we're calling Cuffin Season. And y'all... I literally could go for another 15 weeks, but God told me to stop it at the end of this year. So we cuff until Christmas, okay? We, we cuff till Christmas because God wants people to be uncuffed from every bondage, barrier, and chain that has kept them from reaching their full purpose. How many people that are listening and watching in this room right now want to get a well done when they get to heaven? Like, just, just, no, just for real. Because some of us are living like we don't want to. No, let's just be honest. Like, like, you know, like, when you show up for school and there's a test and you was like, I didn't know there was a test. If I would have known there was a test and it would count for 50% of my grade, I would have studied. But now I'm going to fail because I didn't study for the test. That's how most of us going to be when we get to heaven. I didn't know that what I said mattered. I just thought it was my birthday weekend. I thought that just got scrubbed off because, you know, turn on, turn on. I didn't know how I lived, how I served. I didn't know that it wasn't just about protecting me and my family. I didn't know, God, if you would have told me that, I would have lived differently. I'm here to tell you right now, our good our well done, good and faithful servant does not come by what we say to God when we stand before the great white throne. Our good, our well done, good and faithful servant comes from how we live right now. And so why are you saying, Pastor Mike, we got to get uncuffed from everything? I really believe that 2023 is going to be a year of freedom for the body of Christ. Now, you don't have to believe that by faith and all that. But as I'm praying, 
There is about to be an expansion of the people who have sown in seasons where it looked like nothing. And this is going to be a season of freedom. You're going to have options. <laughs> oh, you missed it, but I'll talk to them. This is going to be a season where you don't have to settle for just enough because this is all the options we have. This is going to be a season of freedom. You're going to be blessed to be a blessing. You're going to... Oh, my God. I need to find the people with faith. 2023 is about to unleash another level of your generosity, your discernment, your ability to step in with no credit and make a difference. But you can't be free and cuffed at the same time. You, 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 no prisoner that's cuffed can lift their hands like this. Even if they're instructed to. Why? Because they're still bound to something that keeps them restricted. And my question to you is, what in your life is still at the end of 2022 binding you and keeping you restricted from being everything God's called you to be. I may not have the time to do a series about it, but God through his word and through this moment is asking you, let me speak to you. God told me this week because I was getting anxious because there's so many more series, so many sermons I want to do. He said, Michael, let me speak private sermons to them. He said, I'll give them a C word. Some of y'all are cuffed to critical. Uh-huh. I'm not even going to start down the road because I, a lot of y'all about to be offended. God said this next week and a half. Let me tell you what I want to speak to you about. Pastor Mike doesn't need to do a sermon about it. I'll talk to you. Come along with me. Turn the radio off. Turn the iPad off. Turn, turn the YouTube off. Stop scrolling on TikTok. They don't have the answer to your future. They might have a recipe, but not a revelation. You need to hear from me. And as I started looking at this whole series, God said, but Mike, there, there are about three more things I need you to publicly talk to the body of Christ about. And I want to be very clear about this. For everybody who doesn't believe in Jesus, these sermons are window shopping for you. I want to be very clear. If you are not a part and giving your life to Jesus fully, I'm going to give my full expression and I'm going to say stuff that the people who have already given their life to Christ already understand or may need refreshing on that this is how we live. But if I say something and it's kind of strong and it's kind of like direct, it's because it's from the Bible. But if you haven't given your life to Jesus, this don't apply to you. I want to be very clear because a lot of people get in the comments talking about that. Don't, you don't believe in Jesus. Like, let, me, let me be very clear. Like, there are rules for the Todd household that don't apply to everybody's household. Some kids can cuss at their parents. I dare. <laughs> I dare Bella to even, she, if she says bubble too hard. No. But, but do you understand what? This is not for everybody. It is for anybody. It is, oh God. It's for anybody who wants it, but not for every. So in these series and as I'm talking, I'm talking to people who have put their faith and allegiance in Jesus Christ. And when you take on that last name and you acting out of line, I can say something about that. When you ain't even trying to make them Lord and Savior and you ain't trying to do nothing and you cuddling with everybody and their mama and repopulating the whole world because you took one scripture out of context, be fruitful and multiply, ain't saying no names, but you need to sit down. Ah. If, you, if he's not Lord and Savior, this don't apply to you. I want you to keep watching. Maybe... Something that is said will jump down in your soul and get to your spirit. And that thing that has probably been starving for many years could get some fertilizer to come alive. So we want anybody to watch. But I just need everybody to know, like, what I'm going to say today specifically is for those who have given their allegiance to Jesus but acting like they don't know him. 
have decided to claim Christ but live carnal. Like, if, if, if we don't talk about that, then there's just this mixture that makes everything diluted. Everybody can have a comment, but everybody's comment doesn't weigh the same. Be because everybody has not committed the same. I just feel like two more seconds on this for just two more seconds. If you're on a basketball team and somebody doesn't come to the practices, but then in the clutch of the game, they want to have a say-so and what we do as a team, you can have a comment, but your commitment to this has not been the same as everybody that has been doing two-a-day practices and eating certain things and trying to live a life of discipline. What I'm saying to everybody is I'm glad that everybody's on this team. There are some of us that have committed our lives to Christ. And we're saying, you know what, if all these heels are out here and we're deciding a heel to die on, we're going to plant our flag that Jesus Christ is Lord, that the Bible is true, that everything, even if it doesn't apply to our context today, has an interpretation that can transform our context today, and that we're supposed to love people unconditionally even when we don't want to. We don't cancel people. We cultivate them. Let me say this. This cultural idea that somebody has the on and off switch to somebody's purpose, yet you can't control the ash around your lips. You can't cancel nobody because you can't. <laughs> Let me stop. I just need everybody to get out of God's position. And I needed to make sure because what I'm about to say is going to be heavy. It's about to be, Q is about to be heavy today. Because I got I to gotta address something that most Christians don't think is a problem. Like most everybody in this room did it five times today. And you're not even thinking that it's a problem. What the Holy Spirit told me, he said, Michael... I need you to go back to the Ten Commandments. I'm like, okay. He said, I need you to just start listing them off. Yeah, can y'all help me list off the Ten Commandments? Uh, uh, what, what are they? That somebody said, thou shalt not steal. You knew that one. You got that one when you was three. Put that bubble gum back. God is going to get you. Thou shalt not steal. Your mama ghetto, but she used thou. Okay, we got thou shalt not steal. What's the other one? Yeah, yeah, do you not kill in nobody? Huh? Honor thy mother and father. Yeah, the mother, they use that one, huh? What else? Huh? No other God before thee. We good with all of those, huh? We ain't killing nobody, we ain't stealing. No other gods before him. What, what else? You should not covet. Some, whatever somebody else has, we're struggling with that one as a culture. Uh, what, what? Okay, okay. Don't commit adultery. You better not be sleeping with somebody else's wife. You better not be sleeping with somebody else's husband. We got that one. Okay, okay. Now, now you, you, you go look it up in Exodus. Go find all of them because some of y'all are confused. <laughs> somebody was like, he said do more than... No, hold on, stop. That's not... Okay. But, but there's one in there that the Holy Spirit said, stop. Um, when he said it, I was kind of caught off guard because I've never preached a message about this. And today, I'm, I promise you, I want to encourage your faith. Somebody shouted me, crazy faith. But I have to first address the fake. The part of us that has not been honoring God because of how we've been living and thinking it's okay. So I have a confession to make. I've been on a, um, I've been on a journey um, to lose weight and get healthy here. I'm proud to report that I have lost 55 pounds in this year. And glory to God. And um, I've made a decision as of this week, I'm going to gain all the, way all the weight back. 
I'm gaining all of it back. And I really want to see in 2023 if God can really do an overflow. I want to be 275 pounds, okay? I'm, that's cap. <laughs> what I just did is I lied. And it was funny in the moment. But we're so used to it that it has become the currency of our culture. Today I want to preach a message called Cuff to Cap. And somebody's looking at your neighbor like, like a bottle cap? I don't, don't get it. The young people now um, have started to exchange the word lying for the phrase, that's cap. Like, what, what ends up happening is, like, if somebody says something like, yo, I just made $100,000 today, somebody who knows them will be like, cap. <laughs> you lying. <laughs> You just asked me to cash app you $15. How you make 100,000 and you still owe me 15? People come to, to be like, yo, 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 you see that girl over there? I'm dating them. Cap. Brother, there's no way you dating her. Like, it, it, it's a different term for the word lying. But all the way back in Exodus, God told us, don't have false witness, don't lie. I'm trying to protect you from something. And now our culture has been inundated with this idea that it's more profitable to lie, to make ourselves appear as something we are not, so that we can have status or have a place or have a job. Let's be honest in here. We are a humble, open, and transparent church. How many people who have ever filled out a job application and lied on it? Hand, I want hands. Put your hand in there. First off, you not 6'2". Shut your butt up. You lie. Your driver's license proves that you lying. 172 pounds. When you were 17? Like, come on, let's be honest. All right, now I'm going to look at y'all. How many people know they have lied on an application before? Okay. How many people have lied to somebody you love? How many people have lied to somebody you didn't know? You know when people nosy and they just ask you a question, what you doing here? You can't just say none of your business or... I feel like keeping that private. You'd be like, man, I'm about to buy up some stuff. Like, no, you are. You ain't giving out no got no money. <laughs> but it just seems like the currency of our culture is cap. And we're cuffed to it. The truth of the matter is we're so cuffed to it. We're cuffed to lying. We're cuffed to cap that it's showing up in our marriages. Now, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand, but anybody who's a real one, would answer this question. How many of you have lied to your spouse? Why? Because look at him. So he was like, oh, shoot. God, dog it. I knew we were supposed to go to that other church. We should have turned. I'm telling you, this is going to be healing by the end of it. What I'm saying to you is when we become comfortable with cap, it desensitizes us to the character of Christ. I'm going to say it again. When we become comfortable with cap, we lying about stuff we don't even got to lie about. It's just stupid. Like, when I was a child, I lied about everything. I just, it was just dumb. Like, why was I lying? Did you go to McDonald's? No, uh-uh. Sitting there with the wrapper and the bag. Well, why do you have the wrapper and the bag? Somebody was just, I, I was, they was littering. And I was like, save the whales. So I just picked it up and I, I took it. And so what is that sauce on your lip? I got hit. I would just be lying. I was the captain of the cap committee. And a lot of people don't talk about this anymore because it's so in, inundated in your everyday life and everybody does it that you think God doesn't care. Like, 
Like there's a way to let somebody not know what you're doing without tell, and, and not telling them all your business without lying. Bill collectors call. You be lying to them all the time. Okay. It's going to be tight in here just for a few minutes. Are you going to pay us on the six? Yeah, I'm, I'm yes. You know. You have no intention. You're saving that number in your phone right now to never answer it again. You, your family calls. Okay, let's just go to the most basic one that we see every day. How you doing? How many times do you lie a week when somebody just says, how you doing? Oh, I'm good. Bless your highly favorite. Everything's great. Knowing you just got up off the floor crying because of anxiety and depression. You just finished telling somebody, nobody cares about me. You just said, I don't know if I ever want to do this again. And somebody comes to ask you, how you doing? And your automatic reaction, lie. It's so common that right now it's hard for me to even talk about it because you don't think it's a real issue. You think, I mean, that's just what you do. You just don't tell people all your business. No, 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 no. You cannot tell people all your business and not be disobedient to God. See, that's what we don't understand. Lying is disobedience to God. It is considered, watch this, I know you don't like the S word, sin. So every little time you say it was just a little white lie, God says that's the language of Satan. I can't stand that language because it's the language that took the kingdom that I was building and split it into two. Like, we don't do lying. That's why God said, Mike, I need you to teach a message that's going to be unpopular. But that's going to bring freedom. Somebody say cuff to cap. Okay, let, let's, let's, let's just go. Exodus 20, 16, you can look at it later. You must not testify falsely against your neighbor. Stop lying. One of the Ten Commandments. And a lot of people get technical. It's like, that was in the Old Testament. Let me bring it to you in the New Testament. This is Jesus in Matthew chapter 19, verse 18. Jesus said, you shall not murder. Got that one. You shall not commit adultery. Got that one. You shall not steal. Got that one. You shall not bear false witness or lie or cap. And right now, if I was to ask people in this room, are you telling the truth about every area of your life? Most people could not answer that question honestly. You would have to plead the fifth. And God told me to say, I never meant for this Christian life to be lived in lies. I never meant for the, I am the one who lives in, everybody say this word, truth. And this is going to be uncomfortable because some of you were born out of lies. Uh-oh, God dog it. This is gonna be uncomfortable because you still don't even know the truth of your origin. We don't talk about that in our household. We don't bring up issues. We don't talk. Is everybody going to be okay at this Christmas? We're going to act like it. And then we're going to leave and feel something else. And then we're going to get with somebody we trust that don't think can do nothing with the issue. We'll tell them the truth. But we lied to the people we said we loved. Uh-oh. And this is why I have to come and ask you to uncuff from the cap. Everybody say cuff to calf. <laughs> yeah, this is what some of y'all been cuddling with because the seed of a lie usually multiplies. Ooh, that's big talk right there. If you lie, it is a seed and that seed will multiply. You have never lied once and only had to lie once. It is so quiet in here today. Everybody was shouting a second ago, but now everybody shut up. <laughs> People leaving, they like, uh -uh, I got to get my kids up out of here because they're going to find out they daddy, ain't they daddy? Listen to what I'm telling you. It's better if the lie is exposed now so that you can start living in the truth. Because the longer you lie, the more it multiplies. 
Okay. I'm going to need real security on the way out of here. Are you ready, sir? Okay, you got me. All right. Um, see, I'm going to just tell on myself because it's better when I'm talking about a heavy subject that I can talk, talk about me. Lying is a sin. I knew that from a little boy, but I had an affinity and I was kind of good. I was kind of expert, kind of a savant at lying. I don't know. It just came naturally. It was, it, it, it just, I just knew how to make it seem real. And, 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 okay. How many kid liars were in the room, are in the room right now? Come on. You just, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. My people. We're here. I love you. God has transformed us. Okay. But if you were a kid liar and you never got transformed, you're an adult liar. Let me just say, it doesn't go away with age. It just becomes more cemented. It becomes harder to see the difference between the lie and the truth. I lied so long that it followed me into my adulthood. When I was a youth pastor at this church, a lie I told in my early 20s about car insurance. It was stupid. It didn't make no sense for me to lie about it. I got in a wreck, did not have insurance. The man said, did you have insurance? All I should have done was tell him the truth. No. I do not have insurance. And I would have paid a fine. I would have had to pay for the car getting fixed out of pocket. And my license maybe would have been suspended. Y'all, I lied. At the moment I got in the accident, pulled out my Nokia phone. Some of y'all know about Nokia phones. Pulled out my Nokia and I called. The insurance per, uh, person, 15 minutes or less can save you 15% on your car insurance. I, call, I remembered the commercial, called them, got insurance at the moment. The people called back. They said, did you have insurance on the day uh, at the time of the accidents? I said, yes. I had insurance on the day of the accident. Uh, Y'all going to be fake with me. They said, sir, let me get this straight. Did you have insurance at the time of the accident? Ma'am, I don't know if you can hear me. Yes, I had insurance on the day of the accident. We did that seven times. I wasn't budging. <laughs> Click. Five years later. I had been stalked at a quick trip by an unmarked car. I had people show up at my house. I ended up getting my license suspended anyway. All these things happen for them to come and say, you got to turn yourself in. For car They've been doing a five-year investigation on you. I'm over here serving the youth. Come on, let's praise God with our whole lives. Stop sleeping with them. Stop drinking with them. Stop digging with them. And God was like, okay. Yeah, I'm progression, not perfection, but we got to go back and deal with this lie. And do you know who confronted me about the lie? Bishop Gary McIntosh. Regular Sunday, Scott was on TPD at the time. Scott calls Bishop and said, uh, you know there's a warrant out for Pastor Michael's arrest, right? I'm just do to do. God bless y'all. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. God bless you. <laughs> Bishop says, Mike, I need to talk to you real quick. I'm like, what's up, Bishop? With everything. <laughs> Sermon's going to be great today. Worship is banging. Everything's going to be great. He said, um, did you know that there is a warrant out for your arrest? At that moment, I lost all feeling in my entire body. No, I'm not even playing with you. At that moment, heart at my feet. I looked at him and then I was presented with an opportunity to multiply the lie again. And my lips were fixed to act like, oh, what? 
me. Like I was, I was ready to put on a complete show. And it was like the Holy Spirit said, you haven't learned after five years that the lie only multiplies? And I told him, I said, Bishop, I did it. He said, what happened? And I told him the whole story about the car insurance fraud and the da-da-da-da-da. And he was like, we're going to make it through this. I said, I hope so. <laughs> he said, well, Scott's going to come and tell you what you need to do. Scott came in. No moral support at the time. Scott was horrible <laughs> with emotions. I'm scared. He said, you're going to turn yourself in. I said, turn myself in? I can't go to the big house. This place too pretty for the jail. My dad goes with me. We go to Big Al's bail bond because he used to be an usher at Higher Dimensions. I said, Al, I need you to save my... He was like, yeah, we're going to have to go in here and we drive down there, I go get a haircut. My man Aaron that sang today, he cut my hair. I put on a suit jacket. I, if I was going to jail, my picture, uh, 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 like I was going to give it to him. <laughs> I'm just trying to make this real for you. I go to jail. I got Wednesday night Bible study to talk to the youth. But I have to turn myself in at 7 a.m. We go. And we turn ourselves in, not we, I turn, <laughs> dad, thank you for being there with me. I was very scared. I just told him, wait outside the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Went in, turned myself in, whole thing, got out at 635 and literally went straight to preach to the youth. Had to get up on Sunday in front of the entire church. I have video of it. And I had to tell the church what happened because I was going to end up in Busted Magazine. See, y'all don't know. See, if I would have just told the truth, all my high school friends who ain't seen me in years, first time they're going to see me. It's like, I knew it. And as I was picking up trash, your dirty trash, you Tulsans, you dirty Tulsans. As I was picking up trash from all over the city in community service, God said to me, you should have just told the truth. And I think about that every time I'm about to lie again. It's God just saying, just tell the truth. If you tell the truth, I can protect you in the truth. If you tell the truth, we can work to a better end. Somebody say, just tell the truth. But we can't because we're cuffed to cap. And so this is, this is what I want you to know. Why God is trying to uncuff us from cap is because what you are trying to avoid by lying in the long run will cost you less if you tell the truth. I paid more money, more time, more embarrassment, and more, like, it was such a hard situation because I did not tell the truth at the moment it happened. It lasted for five years, and now it's lasted into my testimony for the rest of my life. Okay? What God is saying is stop sowing the seed of lies and start sowing the seed of truth. And right now, everybody is now contemplating what you've been lying about. People think you're from a place you're not even from. Where are you from, the East Coast? Oh, like New York or something? Yeah. You ain't, you ain't never been to New York. But they think the fashion sense you have is, oh, you know she from New York because people just run with stuff. And you're like, yeah. Stop lying. Stop capping. Stop cutting off the blessing of God because of the moment that you feel would be easier if they did not know the truth. What lying does is it cuts off the flow of God. Okay. I'm going to get into it. Um, we've heard this. I know we're going to give in just a minute, and everybody's excited about giving. But like, Pastor Mike, you are not making me really faith-filled for giving and crazy faith. Just stay with me. I promise you this thing going to flip in a second. But we got to deal with your lying self. I'm going to give you a scripture, but nobody thinks about this. Luke 6.38. We always hear this at offering time. Give, and you will receive. Your gift will return to you in full Good measure, press down, shaking together, running over, make room, because it's going to be poured into your lap. The amount you give 
will determine the amount you get back. Is the word money in that anywhere? So if you sow seeds of lying, give lying, and it will be returned to you. Good measure. Press down. Shaken together and running over will men start lying back to you. Nobody talks about the multiplication of our words that are not grounded in the truth. A lot of the things you're praying to be out of are the harvest on the lies you sowed in a different season. Okay. Just write it down. Lying is a seed that shows back that shows back up in your life, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Every time you lie, know you're getting it back. Good measure. Pressed down and shaken together. Every white lie. Every time you lie about what time you made it to work. When you become a CEO, you're going to have an employee that gives it back to you. Good measure. Pressed down, shaken together. And running over. Be disrespectful to authority. You're going to get it back. Good measure. Press down. I'm just trying to tell you the principle. That is not about money. That's about whatever you give. And most of us want it to be about the good things. And not about the bad things. But we're cuffed to cap. We are cuffed to the idea that God is not a man of his word. <laughs> and this is why. Somebody say it shows back up. Lying shows back up as depression. Lying shows back up as shame. Lying shows back up as anxiety. Lying shows back up as addictions. Let me say it like this. Lying turns you into the devil you didn't want to be. When you start lying about little things, you will end up at a place doing things, being somebody you never, the very person you hated you will become. Can I prove it to you? <laughs> Write this point down. Lying is the language of Lucifer. Notice I didn't say Satan or the devil. See, most people don't know, oh, Lucy, he was an archangel. Nobody delineates this, but it was Gabriel, Michael, and Lucifer. They were the three archangels. Lucifer started lying and turned into the devil. Golly. He wasn't the devil. He was Lucifer who started capping. Maybe this praise belongs to me. Cap. Maybe I'm the one that's supposed to be running heaven. Cap. Maybe I have a better plan than God. Cap. But it was Lucifer's lies. That turned him into the devil. Oh, God. Okay. Let me say it to you like this. Okay. Like, like bad people don't lie. Good people lie and become bad. Oh God. Lord, help me till this angry soil of your people's heart. The truth hurts sometimes. That, that's why I said I'm talking to people who have put their allegiance in Christ. God's telling you today through a revelation. Stop lying. Stop lying to people. Stop lying about what time you're going to be there. You're not going to be there in 10 minutes. You're not. Just tell them 30. Stop. Look at it. They, they, look, it's like a, a lunch room in here. They're like, oh my God, I did that this morning. Thank you for saving my seat. Like, Stop lying to your kids. Stop lying that you're going to actually spend time with them this week. What you're doing is you're creating an environment that desensitizes, watch this, the word. All the enemy wants to do is make your word powerless. So the more you lie and the more you don't show up, the people around you do not believe. Some of y'all, it was hard for your husband or your wife to agree with you in crazy faith for what the offering was to be because you've been lying that you've been saving money for the budget. 
So it was your words in a different season that didn't line up with your actions that then when God calls on you to do something, they don't believe your word because you've been desensitized because you're cuffed to cap. It's what the church don't talk about, what we deal with the ramifications of people lying, but we never talk about the root issue, the root cause, which is cap. Stop capping. Stop lying. Stop doing it. Because you think it's easier today and it goes away. Lying is a seed that shows back up multiplied. So um, I heard it said like this. Lying takes you further than you want to go, keeps you longer than you want to stay, and costs you more than you want to pay. When you lie... It takes you further than you want to go. I didn't even know I would be out here lying about a monkey and, and, and this shoestring and a toothbrush and why. Like, I have been in some lies that are so elaborate that I don't even believe myself that I said it. Like, why in the... It's because it takes you further than you want to go. And it keeps you longer than you want to stay. Some of us have been in a lie for so long that it feels... Like less work to live in, to, to stay there than to actually live in the truth. So it's like to actually go back and tell the truth about these situations, I'll just I'll wait till they die. Or I've had somebody tell me that. I know this truth about this, but I'm not going to get healed and live in the truth. I'll just wait till they die because I can't deal with their response to what actually happened. And the whole body of Christ is doing this right now. And what you're living is in a state of perpetual trauma. You hate. The reason why people don't answer phone calls no more is because you don't know what trauma is on the other side of that phone call. That's why we'd be like, text me. Give me some words to let me know where we're going in this conversation. Because, hello, what are you doing? I'm going to lie to you. What you doing today? Nothing. You just lied. You fully dressed sitting there, ready to go out. But you don't want your life to be impeded by somebody else. And so we just keep on communicating in the language that is contradictory to heaven. I just said a mouthful. The language that is not accepted in heaven is lie and we've been practicing it our whole time on earth what will you be fluent in when you get to heaven will you be fluent in the truth or will you be fluent in lying will you be fluent in building up people's character or will you be fluent in capping and the truth of the matter is most believers will get to heaven and not be able to speak the language If the language of heaven is truth, most of us will not be able to speak the language. We will be in a foreign country. And God says, if you uncuff right now, I can teach you how to speak in truth. I can teach you how to use your words to be able to represent and represent me. And this is what I'm trying to believe for everybody, that we would adopt a practice of trying our hardest every day to no longer lie. I'm not saying today it's going to be hard because you're so used to it. Tomorrow it's going to be hard because you're so used to it. You're going to have to practice your responses. Somebody's going to say, how are you doing today? And you're not doing good? And you're going to have to say, I've had better days. That's still the truth. You just tweaked. Not being fake. I ain't going to be fake. You lying. That is fake. But maybe I can ask the Holy Spirit to help me be intentional. What, how do I respond to not trigger my husband or wife when I've had a hard day but not lie to them? Oh, God. Like, like is something wrong with you? No. Nah. I'm good. I'm cool. It'll be all right. Those are all. 
That's cap, y'all, that's lies. But we do it every day. And they're like, okay, don't ask for no dinner and don't ask for no mm. <laughs> Come on, y'all. He want to be, he want to act like that. He want to, I ain't going to bother him. I'm going to give him space. But I promise you, he better not be coming over here. But you ask him like, he better not be touching on me. Want to give me a massage or give me a foot massage. You don't, you don't want to talk? If you don't want to talk. But why would you have that response if it was the truth? You have the response because you feel like there is disconnect because it's a, it's a lie. Okay? So, so I want to acknowledge this right now as, 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 as we make a switch real quick. The reason that people lie, the reason that we don't tell the truth, it's rooted in fear. And I need to address this right now because it's impeding our relationship with God. Ever since we are young kids, how many kid liars did I have in this room right now? Like that would not tell their parents the full truth, the whole truth, but the truth, okay. That's like 85 to 90% of the room. And we got to ask God as parents, anybody that's parents, we got to ask God for wisdom right now of how to raise our children in an environment where there is discipline, but there also is honesty and transparency. Because a lot of times, many of us did not tell the truth, not because we didn't know the truth, it's because we didn't want them consequences of the truth. And slowly but surely, our response was based in fear instead of faith that our parents would do the right thing. Even if they would, we ain't giving them opportunity. You ain't about to punch me. Uh, you ain't about to whoop me in front. You ain't about to. And subconsciously, watch this. I'm trying to connect this. This is very scientific right now. I'm trying to let you see that what you've done for the past two, three, four decades in lying has now made you have a fear of telling God what's really wrong. So then you come to God and now God's calling cap on you because your prayers, he's like, cap, God, I just want to be used by you, cap. No, you want a position. You want people to know your name. You don't want to be used by me. You want them to know I'm using you, cap. Uh oh. We won't say what it really is. You just say, God, I want to be married. No, you actually are in comparison with your best friend since sixth grade. Cap, you don't want to be married. You don't want to serve. You don't want to die. You don't want to give. You want to take Instagram pictures and look good. And you want to have, <laughs> cap. And what we're doing is we're coming to God. Capping. In his presence. God, if you give me this job, I'll use my resources to help anybody. Cap. You only use your resources to people that make you feel like the man or the woman and give you a position on the board or make sure that you feel like cap. Because I'll tell you to get to somebody that you'll never see it in that same spot. It's affecting. And many times we're not coming to God with authenticity because it was based out of a trauma or a fear that we had in a different series. And God said, would you uncuff from cap? Would you stop lying? The real reason that you don't actually go to the gym? <laughs> she said, all right. <laughs> okay, pastor. No, let's, let's be honest. The real reason you don't go to the gym is not because you can't afford the gym membership. I gave you a $10,000 raise on the job last year. Cap. Don't, don't say that it's because of resources. It's because you don't want anybody to look down on you. And make you feel like you did when you were 10 in PE class. And they didn't have clothes that fit you. And so you were out there looking all kind of crazy. And your parents, like, come on, y'all. This is real. And now we're bringing it to God. And God's like, I see through all of that. Would you just come to me and be honest and authentic? And would you not lie? Watch this. This is what I'm going to give you as homework. To uncuff from cap, you must examine Four things, the lies you've learned, the lies you let. Some of us have lies that we just let be lies. Like, you ever met somebody who don't get your name right, and so you just let them call you whatever? It's like, that ain't my name, but you know what? If that's the best you got. But you let, hold on, hold on, it's not their fault anymore. Because it's a lie you let. You allow that. We got to examine the lies you've learned from a childhood, 
lies you let, the lies you live. Some of y'all are living in a lie right now. Like, I just, oh my God, I'm, I'm, I'm just an extrovert. You're not. You just realize you don't get any attention when you're actually who you really want to be. So you go into this. You're living a life. That's why you're so exhausted. And then you're trying to medicate yourself in things that you know are going to leave you in a bad place. You're cuffing to other things to just try to keep up appearing. And God says, stop lying. Stop living the lie. You got to examine the lies you've learned, the lies you let, the lies you live. And then watch this. This is the hard one. The lies you love. There's some lies you love that don't love you back. Oh, baby, you know what I'm saying? I'm just a player. No, you're not. You're just an insecure man that who, who won't commit to one woman because you like m multiple women stroking your ego, but you're actually scared that you could never please just one. You're not a, you're not a player, you're, a, you're scared. But we're not going to say that. That's a lie. That it's, we're lying to ourselves. And then we get to the end of our lives and be frustrated. And, and the reason I built all of this out, it took 54 minutes to build this, is because I need you to understand the most dangerous consequence of lying is you become comfortable with cap. When you continue to lie and you lie all the time and your kids lie and your husband lie and your boss lies and you lie so you don't get in trouble and you lie so you don't have to have a meeting and you lie so you don't have to answer the email and you lie about where you went and you lie about where you go and you lie about the real reason you left the job and you lie about, and you just keep lying, it makes you desensitized and it makes you comfortable with cap. It makes you comfortable with lying and this is the truth. Write this down. Everybody, if you haven't taken a note, I need you to write this down. Man lies. That's a part of the fallen nature of man, that we're always going to struggle with telling the truth in any situation. That is a part of the fall. Man lies. That's why there's grace. But he doesn't lie. That's why he's God. Now, I need you to see this, because if you do not get this revelation, you will be putting man's standards on God. You will look at a man who lied to you and say, because my dad lied to me or my coach lied to me or that boss lied to me, then maybe I can't trust God. Baby, God is not a man that he should. Oh, 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 here's the flip. Numbers chapter 23, verse 19. Every person that has ever lied to you Everything that you've ever done to lie, you cannot copy and paste that character to our omniscient God. You cannot put man's position on a holy God who made you with purpose. And many of us have been lied to and lying so long that we think that somehow God's not going to do what he said he's going to do. He is not your cousin, not your baby daddy, and not your best friend. He is the God of the universe. The God, when he speaks a promise, he cannot lie. I'm about to get happy in this room. He is the God that keeps every promise. The stars are hung in place by the words that he spoke one time. He did not have to come back for an annual checkup on Mars, Pluto, or Saturn. He spoke the word and he did not lie. That's why it's still standing today. Somebody say God can't lie. You didn't even say it like you believe it. In the middle, somebody say, God can't, lie. God can't lie. Type it in the chat. I want you to say it with your chest. God can't lie. God can't lie. Everybody in this room, stand up right now. I need your faith to be activated. Somebody has been believing God for something, and I need you to yell it from your belly. Somebody say, God can't lie. God can't lie. Sit down. This gets me excited because I've been cuffed to cap, but God hasn't. <sighs> I'm getting excited because when I look at the promises of God, 
I cannot apply my earthly experience to his heavenly existence. I cannot act like just because people let me down that God is going to do the same thing. And most of us as believers put man's stipulations on someone who is not human. Numbers chapter 23, 19, so you can have context. God is not a man. He ain't a woman. He's not a man. So he does not lie. Say it with me. He does not lie. One more time. He does not lie. He is not no human. So he does not change his mind about you. The purpose he put on you, yeah, you, he knew he was going to go through a divorce. He didn't change his mind. Yeah, he knew you were going to be, be, be abused in that situation and, and, and tried to save, but humanity got in the way, but he still didn't change his mind about you. He knew that I was going to have a car insurance fraud case and be facing a felony charge and say, yeah, I still haven't changed my mind about you. He has ever spoken he has never spoken and failed to act. O M G. This is the only Bible scripture you need to meditate on. Everybody that's believing God in crazy faith, this is the one you need right now. He will not lie. <laughs> he is not human, so he doesn't change his mind. He has never spoken and failed to act. Has he ever promised and it not carried it through? See, and this is where we get real tit for tat. Well, I did ask for like uh, uh, a baby by the age of 23. And God, no, 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 no. He's not Santa. He's not your big daddy, <laughs> your sugar daddy. He doesn't give you what you want when you want it. He gives you what you need when you need it. Oh my God. The truth of the matter is he knows how to interpret the difference between what you're saying and what you actually need to fulfill purpose. He only gives in line with his will for your life, and he can not lie. If my daughter asked me for a machete knife right now because she wants to play, uh, reenact something from a movie she saw because I'm a good father, I am not going to give her what she asked for because I know it would harm her. That does not mean I don't care about her. It actually proves that I care about her, that in her delusion to ask for something that is dangerous, I, as her loving father, would pull her close and say, baby, we don't play with machetes. And some of y'all been asking for uh, men named Martin Machete and women named Michelle Machete. And God said, you can't have them because that's dangerous for your health. And the reason you're not in a relationship right now is because I'm not keeping you from something. I'm keeping you for something. Oh my God, I'm trying to preach in here today. What God is saying to you is, I don't lie. If I told you I was going to provide it, I will. It may not be what you thought it was going to be, but it'll be everything you need it to be. Somebody say he can't lie. But if we don't, if we don't walk with that confidence, we start living in the delusion that God's like everybody else. <laughs> and, and that's why I have to come confront everything in our life that we've been capping about. God said, be like me. Stop capping. Stop telling lies. Tell the truth and watch me honor my word and my promises and tell the truth and actually perform. My favorite part of that scripture, the second half where he says, oh, I love it. He has never spoken and failed to act. Oh, that's why we get disappointed in people. It's because they speak. Just don't tell me if you're not going to do it. Like, let's be, let, let's be honest. Just tell me I'm not getting married. Okay. <laughs> Just tell me so I can but if, if he spoke it, he said, I've never spoken anything and not acted on it. That's why when me and my family get ready to give in crazy faith, what I'm writing down on this card, this is not an exercise of spiritual uh, uh, gambling. We're not writing our things down, putting money in the slot machine and praying that God does it. This is an exercise of my faith. When I pray and ask God what to put on this card, 
I trust him by faith to interpret what I'm saying and what my needs look like now and do what's best for me. What's best for me, I don't always write down. Uh-oh. What's best for me may not even be in my wheelhouse because of the pain I'm experiencing in the season. But God is so good. It says that the Holy Spirit is interpreting. He's making intercession for us at the right hand of the Father. I know that's what they're praying for, but what they really need is peace in their mind. I know they're praying for a new house, but more square footage is not going to provide the peace that they need. So what they really need is a good counselor and a good friend. And throw in a puppy. Yeah, Sparky will help them in the time. Just one little lick. And they'll be able to be okay God is interpreting and he's saying will you trust me will you trust me because I can't cap I can't lie it's not in my DNA it's not in my blood the whole world is dependent on my word being the truth if I lie to you then I lied about the cross if I lie to you about the promise then I lie to you about salvation and atonement and I lie to you about grace and repentance and I am not a man that I should lie and I'm not the son of man that I ever would have to repent or turn because I did it the wrong way. God said, the reason you can believe me in crazy faith is because I can't cap. I will not lie. And do you know why that makes me so excited? Oh, shoot. Write this point down. If he said it, it's settled. Oh, I'm about to shout all by myself. I don't need a word and agreement from anybody else. But if he said it to me, what he told me about my son, MJ, when he said it, it was settled. What he told me about Transformation Church, when he said it, somebody say it's settled. The truth of the matter is many people don't believe it because you think God is a man that he should lie. But I'm standing in the fact that we in this freaking building right now. Do you know how far fetched it is for somebody? Do y'all know how long people been doing dream boards and taking pictures of buildings and houses and putting on stuff that, that we'll never live in? I got too much proof. I got too much proof. Somebody say, I got too much proof. You're thinking about me, but the fact that you're still here and what God has done in your life. Somebody say, I got too much proof. If he said it, how do you act when it hits the account? See, it's so crazy. Like, like when you get paid, you don't actually get nothing physical. All you get is an alert. Bing. Now, some of y'all are so confident that it comes, you don't even need the alert. You just got to know what day is it? You walk different. You drink your coffee different. You put your glasses on different when you get paid, huh? Hello? Are you speaking to me? <laughs> Why? Because you know it's, everybody say settled. The reason I'm excited today to step out in crazy faith and give um, as a family more than we've ever done before in our life, not because we got it, because God asked for it. The reason I'm excited is because, write this down, God can't cap, so there is no cap. Hold on. Hold on, you missed it. He can't lie. So every cap that I thought God was doing is actually him taking off the lid, <laughs> taking off the limit. <laughs> he said, if you trust me in this and believe my word that I'm not lying to you and do and obey and give and trust and serve and move and do what I ask you to do, you have just taken off the cap. The reason you have to stop believing the lies is because when you believe that God can't cap, you remove the cap. There is no limit to what God will do. Oh my God, I'm living proof. There is no limit to what God will do with somebody who will obey even in the midst of other people thinking they're lying. Nobody believed me when I said this would be our building. 
Thank God. Somebody said, I did. That's questionable. I, now I'm just, I'm, I'm trying to get everybody to see is, even in the face of other people thinking it's cap, it was the very act that took off the cap. The reason why many of you have to step over this line of maturity and start tithing and giving offering and giving extravagant gifts, even when your parents who are multimillionaires say, we don't do that and do blah, 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 and we got generational funds. They don't have peace though. And what God is saying to you, you know the dysfunction, you know the drama, you know the thing. God says, I'm wanting you to step over the line of everything that other people think. And I'm letting you know I'm not lying. You've been believing God that the fertility treatment will actually work. And you're on your third round of IVF. And you can't afford it. And more than that, your emotional tank is empty. And God, you still would ask me to do something for somebody else? He said, every seed you sow, every tear you sow, every dollar you give, Every hug you extend, you are being used as a vessel. And my daughter and my son hold fast to my promises because I cannot cap. I'm not lying to you. He that was faithful to begin the work is going to be faithful to see it to its completion. And there... Is faith rising in everybody that is in this room and watching right now? That even in the midst of situations that look unfavorable, God is reminding you, I'm not like man. I'm not like that person. I am not trying to pull the okie doke on you. This is not a scam or a scheme or a manipulation tactic to fund the church. This is your opportunity to trust me beyond anything you have ever done before. And let me make you a guarantee. I cannot lie. If I said it, it's settled. Put your faith in it, take it to the bank, and believe it. Because we serve a God who can not lie. Will somebody give God praise in this room right now? Oh, if you know. Matter of fact, let me just praise for myself. Thank you, God, that your word is true. Thank you, God, that your promises are true. I got too much proof. I wonder what Noah would have said when people said it wouldn't rain. They yelled, cap. But when the earth flooded, God said, no cap. <laughs> Huh? Think about it. What happened when Abraham, God told him, you're going to have a son. And his wife called Cap. Ain't nothing more devastating than the people you, like, know you intimately being like, Cap. She laughed. But at 90, when she gave son gave birth to a son named Isaac, God said, no cap. <laughs> when a few years later, God said, hey, you know that thing I blessed you with? I want it back. Hold on, not Isaac. Not my business. Not my social media page that blew up during the pandemic. Not the proceeds from, uh-uh. Not my vacation fund. Hold on, hold on, you didn't even have this to be frustrated about 15 years ago. But now I'm asking for what I gave you back. And you got a problem with it? Abraham said, nope, I will rise early in the morning and I will go, me and the boy will go worship. Because he remembered. Hold on, let me not trip out with the one who provided everything. But watch this. Him, the boy, the servants, they go and they don't have any sacrifice. And he knew he was about to have to give God the very thing God gave him. Oh, my gosh. They stop at the bottom of the hill, and he looks at his servants and said, me, stay here. Me and the boy going to go worship. And I don't know who those servants and assistants were, but they was like, this is about to be bad. 
There's no sacrifice. We know how this goes. He's going to kill him. And when he said, we'll be back, me and the boyers are going to go worship. Those servants probably said, Cap. But as Abraham laid his son Isaac, the promise that God gave him on that altar, and said, God, I don't understand this. There's no way that you would ask me to sacrifice this. But if you don't make another way, if this means I got to move from that house and move back into an apartment, if this means I got to work a second job, if this means that I have to leave what's comfortable now, you have my full allegiance. And as the knife is coming down, he hears a bah! He said, what is that? And God said, no cap. I just needed to make sure that everything you had, I still had ownership of. Church, when Daniel got in the lion's den and they thought he would be dead within moments, all the people said, when, he, when they thought he was going to live, they was like, cap. And that next morning when King Darius came, and saw that he was there. Watch this. He said, Daniel, still here. God said, no cap. And Darius said, from now on, we're going to worship the God. Of the Some of the trials that you're going through are just a platform for God to get the hearts of the people who are around you. But if we do not believe God, we cap ourselves, and we believe the lies, which is cap. And God's saying, take the limits off. When Bishop Gary went to North Tulsa to build a multi-ethnic church, the whole city said, cap. Black people aren't going to let you be over there. And if you do stay over there, they're going to dot, 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 dot. And we can tell stories after story after story. But when he transitioned that service to a young black man, in 2015, God said, no cap. <laughs> well, Will Heckenbach was in jail seven years ago. And they told him he would always be addicted to those substances. And he would always need this and always need that. And then when I see him standing up here telling his testimony every Sunday, God's looking over heaven saying, no cap. When Osby told us that his daughter had a little chance to live. And the doctors told us that Samaria wasn't going to make it. All the doctors, the people that had professional opinion, when they said, our daughter's going to live, the doctor said, Cap. But that girl is praising and singing today. God's looking over from heaven today saying, what? No, Cap. All I'm trying to tell you today is if we believe the God who cannot lie, we get to see the limits taken off of our life. You're talking about just being uncuffed. I'm talking about having no boundaries. See, most of us just trying to get right here. And God said, man, if y'all would just go ahead and get uncuffed so you can run this whole thing, that you can be in government, you can be in entertainment, you can be in education, you can be in the schooling system, you can be in sports, you can be in every sphere with no limit. We have to stop capping so that we can believe that God has no cap. Today, I'm encouraging everybody who's giving, who everybody who's starting, because right now, some of y'all hearts have been stirred. You're actually going to stop lying and you're going to believe that God tells the truth. Pastor Mike, that's all you wanted us to get? Yeah, I took the long way to tell you, stop lying. And God only tells the truth. Believe his promises and stop lying to people about yours. If you would get that combination before the end of 2023, it would change the trajectory of your entire life. People are now going to have to start believing God on another level. Look what it says in Ephesians 3.20. Now unto him who is, everybody say, Abel. To do through his mighty powers at work within us, accomplishing 
infinitely more than we might ask or think. As we give in this crazy faith offering that we're about to start today, many people are going to have an opportunity to give today. Some of us are going to have to go home and transfer stuff, close accounts, change different things. Pastor Mike, God would never ask me to change my lifestyle to obey him. Sweetheart, all the disciples gave up businesses. Like, they had their biggest, most successful business day, and they left everything to follow Jesus. Please do not think that serving God is comfortable. It's not comfortable. Serving God is your calling. And as a church, we're going to give in crazy faith. Some of you, God is going to give you, even in this present, I'm going to invite the worship team back up. Um, um, I'm gonna, and, and we're going to be praying. I need everybody to fill out these cards, even if you don't have anything to give. This is not about amounts. This is about obedience. God gives seed to the... He gives seed to those who want to sow. Some of y'all just made a decision. God, in this place, I'm going to believe you in crazy faith, and I'm actually going to sow a seed this year. Some of y'all are going to give more than you've ever given. Some of y'all are going to give millions of dollars. Some of you are going to give hundreds of dollars. Some of you are going to give the coins that you have. Hear me when I say this. It has no bearing on the amount. It has bearing on the obedience. I'm telling you some of the greatest gifts that I've ever seen given were not people dropping bands somewhere. There were people sacrificially saying, God, this is all I got, and I'm going to obey you. And I've watched God over and over and over and over make ways supernaturally because God cannot lie. If he's given you a promise, you need to be reminded of that promise today. And This is the thing that I just want to let everybody know. The reason Transformation Church is so generous is because there's already a sea of people who have made a decision. This is how we live. Linda, this is what we do. We give just to give, not to give. We're going to be able to touch so many people's lives through the generosity of this church. But this is not about money. It's about heart posture. And all week, God is going to be dealing with people. Because he said, I need you to remember, I can't lie. <laughs> I won't cap. If I could get some of the pastoral staff to come up here, anybody who's filled this out, Anybody that has not had one, if you don't have one of these cards, would you just raise your hand in the room? I need y'all to get some cards and pass them out to everybody because this is the moment that some people are going to actually be filling out. God, you're going to write down the things you're believing God in crazy faith for. The three things I believe God for last year on my crazy faith card, two of them, God, I mean, he exceeded my expectation. And right now I'm still waiting on one of them. And how can I wait? Because God can't lie. Today, your faith should be expanded wherever you are, wherever you're watching this. Even if it's next week, next year, we're going to be here. You're going to have an opportunity to give. Some people are saying, well, Pastor Mike, I wasn't ready today. I didn't have myself. I get paid next week. It don't matter if your heart has been set to give, God will give seed to the sower. There are people all over with their hands up. And if you're online right now, you can go to crazy faith at transformchurch.us. Or you can go to Instagram, and it's on everybody's Instagram right now. You can just screenshot it. And I want you to write it. I want you to repost it. Some of y'all going to have to print it out because you're going to need a paper. Matter of fact, some of y'all going to have to make a booklet. And it doesn't matter. God is big enough to hear your request. And let me say it one more time. Man may be cuffed to cap, but God can't lie. Let me say it to you like this. Last point. <laughs> You're not giving to a good man, you're giving to God. I have to remind myself of that every time that I'm giving. It's like, oh, I'm giving to a church. No, 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 no. The Bible tells us so clearly, I think it's in Hebrews. It said, men, Hebrews 7, 8, here mortal men receive your tithes and your offerings, but there he receives them, of whom it is witness that he lives. The buckets, the cash app, the American Express, the, this is just revealing our heart. Yes, Transformation Church is going to be able to steward over the resources we give. Y'all just seeing, we feeding people in Africa, giving to homeless people. We are making a difference all over the world, y'all. We were able to give a church a million dollars to keep the vision going. There's so much stuff we're going to do and keep doing. This is not what this exercise is for. This exercise is to make sure that our hearts 
is in a place where we believe God cannot cap. Some of y'all are going to have to pray over this for another day or two because you had an amount you was going to give and the whole time in this, uh, in this service, the Holy Spirit been like, uh-uh, uh-uh, you, uh -uh, that ain't me. And somebody's like, that got to be the devil. The devil will never tell you to give anything because that's the character of God. Some of you are like, I'm too young. I'm a college student. I'm this. Some of the greatest investments you could ever make for your future is in the season where you don't have much to lose. <laughs> this is your moment. There's not a pair of Jordans that can provide for you what God can. <laughs> There's not an outfit that will give you the self-esteem that you actually need. What we're saying is here is holy. Would everybody stand all over this building? I invited our team up here. This is a holy moment for us as a church. Um, this is three generations of pastoring right here. And all of us have stood in these moments. I remember the first crazy faith offering. It was called Heart for the Kingdom. And I stood up and I said, our church is gonna be a generous church. And all I had to give in that offering was $200. I said, all I had to give, that was all I had to give. But I stood up and that Sunday, $8,300 came in. 83, that might as well have been $8.3 million. On top of our normal offering and, and giving, people gave, and we went to North Tulsa and found churches and we gave all of the money away. And that seed went into good ground and multiplied and continues to show back up in this house every single week. Whether you decide to give or not, you're not a bad person or a good person. This is just like an opportunity that when somebody is like, you can get, on, on, get in on this deal. If I could have got in on buying stock in Apple when it was $2 a share, like I would have done. This is that moment. God's saying, I got an opportunity for you at all times to remember the heart of what I've called you to do. And I cannot lie. Today, we're going to pray for you. Even as a point of contact for everybody in Transformation Nation, we're going to pray for everybody in the room, but the pastors are going to begin to touch these cards. And there's no distance in prayer. And then everybody from around here, you'll be instructed. The worship team's going to sing, and you're going to come and give. There are families that are going to give together. Afterwards, me and my daughters, they already know they each got a certain amount of money that are gonna, is going to go to God. And they've filled out their crazy faith cards. And me and their mama are believing God for some things that money can't buy. This is not get to give. This is God. Here's my life. Here's my heart. And here's something that most people hold on to. Here's my treasure. You can have whatever you gave me back. So today, whether you're in your home, you're in this room, we're going to pray and ask God what he wants us to do. Would you just lift your hands all over and team, just begin to Pray for the people on the card. Father, in the name of Jesus, uh, we're ready to receive instructions from you, God. We need you right now. Come on, I want you to begin to pray. God, you are not a man that you should lie. You're not confused. God, we're praying specifically for Transformation Church. God, this may seem crazy to people, and it is. They may think that this is something that is for the benefit of the church no this is for our benefit god every time i've done this you've changed me from the inside out and today i stand boldly in the face of critics in the face of those who were critiqued and i declare that we have seen you be faithful to your promise over and over again you are not a man that you should lie so today we believe in your word as these people hear from you I thank you, God, that we would have the audacity and the boldness to obey. Father, you are making ways out of no way right now. You are bringing water out of deserts right now. People, Father God, you're giving them ideas. You're making things go through. You're showing them where the resources are at. God, I thank you that we will be able to obey you without hesitation, pressure, or anxiety. Your word says to give what we've already determined in our heart to give. Not with pressure or anything. God, I thank you for peace in giving. And I thank you, Father, that you are a man of your word. Today we trust you. 
Somebody say, Holy Spirit, what are you trying to say to me? Now listen. Woo. Speak, God. Today, as husbands and wives stand together, as families stand together, as business partners stand together, as people give from their overflow and as people give from their need. Today, I thank you, Father, that you would be bigger than all of us and you would be faithful. We just sing this little song. We say, great is your faithfulness to me. He can't lie. Somebody just say, great is your faithfulness to me. It didn't just start today, but from the rising sun to the setting sun, I will praise your name. Somebody just say, great. So, so we're, we're about to all over this place, in this arena. This is just turning into a big altar, okay? You're going to be able to come in the sections and give. You're going to be able to worship in here. If you're in Tulsa and couldn't be here because of work, or you're in Dallas or Kansas, or some people came from New Orleans. I heard New Orleans was in the building, and California. People flew here. Like, listen, if you came, the Crazy Faith Room will be open at 2 o'clock today, and it's going to be open. We're starting today. We had it open last week. Some people couldn't get here this week, and so we extended it. But the rest of this week, even through next Sunday, as God gives you what you are supposed to do, we want you to go, and we want you to give, and we want you to know that God can't lie. If he said it, it's settled. Somebody said, if he said it, it's settled. This is going to mark a moment of turnaround for so many people. Because this is a moment of maturity and here is holy if you're online if you're giving on the app there it's not different that's a holy moment allow God to speak to you and we lift our hands right now and just sing it one more time say great is oh, I feel the presence of God faith is rising in this room yeah faith is rising in this room we trust you God we believe you, God. Woo. You're not going to lie. You are too big. You know what you're doing. Right now, Father, I thank you that everybody that's going to give in this room, giving online, already given, God, I thank you that this will mark a moment of transformation for them. And I thank you, Father, that even as there's a wrestle between people doing what they say and you doing what you say, God, we will lean into our crazy faith that you cannot lie. Today we are sowing to see you do more than we could ever imagine. Have your way is our prayer. In Jesus' name we agree. Somebody say amen. How are we giving? Are we good? Do you can guide the ushers will guide you let's worship God right now somebody say come on we're believing father we thank you for every person
I mean, our prayer team, our church, I want everybody, even if you filled it out, you take a picture, I want you to post it online. I want you to put your faith on display. Because <laughs> at some point, people going to call cap. And when God starts answering these prayers and you're able to cross things out, you going to yell, no cap. God is going to do more than we can even imagine. There's a spirit of worship in this house right now. And we're just going to let the broadcast go here in just a second. But I, I just want us to worship all week. Even if you've already given and you need to come sit in this crazy faith, the crazy faith room, there are people there that will pray with you. There are people there. There's an atmosphere of worship set from 2 to 7, I believe, today. And then every day for the rest of this week from what time? What time does it start? 8.30? You can come before you go to work to 7 o'clock at night. Bring your family in. Let's stay in an atmosphere of worship. This year is different for me because it's not about what God's going to do for me. It's about what God's done in me. And I'm just, I'm just believing that you would get the gift not feeling like God is a genie or a magician that the fact that you have the opportunity to even participate you feel God's faithfulness God's about to turn some stuff around for you I don't know who I'm talking to right now but he's about to turn some stuff around for you and there are people that have just been holding their offering They've been waiting. Listen, this atmosphere is open. Even online, you've just been like, ah, it doesn't mean nothing magical happen when you do it. It's just, it's done. Like, like it happened when you decided in your heart. <laughs> We're gonna be declaring that great is his faithfulness to us. Hands lifted all over the world. If you're in this place or watching online, if you've never accepted Jesus, everybody's hands are already lifted. <laughs> 
If you need to make Jesus Christ your personal Lord and Savior, I just want you to say yes in your heart right now. You've been running from him. And God's saying today is the day of salvation. The thing I want you to give is give me your life. If that's you, on the count of three, we're a family. Everybody's hand is lifted. We don't know it's you, but you know it's you. And God does. Don't cap. You need a Savior and a Lord. And today, I want you to pray this prayer of salvation. And Transformation Church is a family, so we pray it all together. The craziest faith thing you could do today is put your faith in Jesus Christ. If that's you, I want you to pray this prayer along with your whole family. Everybody say, God, thank you for sending Jesus just for me. I'm not gonna lie, I need a savior. Today, I choose you. I believe you lived, you died, and you rose again for my salvation. Today, I receive your grace. Change me, renew me, transform me. I'm yours, in Jesus' name, amen. Can we praise God? All, oh, y'all better help me. Can we praise God? One soul saved, all of heaven begins to turn up. And I think there were multiple. If you gave your life to Christ, would you just lift your hand? I see you, I see you, I see you. Oh, we got people online. Let's give God some praise. Hallelujah. for all of us what if today you didn't just give your life to him but you sowed a seed in crazy faith for the future some of us are given for children's children's today we want to walk with you if you just got saved i want you to text the number on the screen and we're going to send you some information we want to walk with you keep coming back and allow god to continue to transform you today i believe is a start of something that's going to show up this week, next week, the week after, but I believe we're sowing into 2023 for something that has never been done before. God, we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. And we give you all the praise. We believe you, God, because you are not a man that you're going to lie. So, God, we will obey you and believe you in crazy faith. In Jesus' name. Somebody just say amen. I am confident that we are evidence. Yes, you are faithful. You are God. I am confident. Even given this money, God. We are evidence. You're going to do what you say. You are faithful. You are God. Just a couple more times, just lift that. I am Somebody's faith is growing right now. God, we trust you. You're going to make a way. We're regular people believing in a supernatural God. I am the fact that I'm here. the other song just saying just just like this it said I have faith to believe you have all that I need miracle signs and wonders follow me follow somebody me. just lift that up I have faith to believe thank you God you have all that I need Everything you said, Miracle marriage restored, family healed, sickness me, dried up, business me. flourishing. This ministry being everything you, you said it would be. Peace, joy, love. Miracle signs and wonders. That you need, you have all that you're gonna do it, God. Miracle signs and wonders. Follow me, follow me. I have faith to believe. You have all that I need. Miracle signs and wonders. Follow me, follow me. Cause I believe.
believe that you're my healer. And I believe this is the part that you are all I need. That you're my portion. To do everything you promised God. I believe you're more than enough. You're more than enough for me. Jesus, you're all I need. Jesus, you're all I need. More than enough for me. More than enough for me. So Jesus, you're all I need. Jesus, you're all. Lift that up. Said, I believe, I believe that you're, you're God, you're going to do everything that you said. I Sing it. Nothing is Whoa. Impossible. This is why we're giving in crazy faith. Somebody say, Nothing is Whoa, I feel that. impossible for you. Brian, there's nothing impossible. There's nothing impossible. God can do it all. Come on, somebody just lift that up. Just say, Nothing is impossible. They might think it's impossible. But with God, it's not impossible. We're going to be talking next year this time. And we're going to see God do the impossible. Whoa! Somebody say. Nothing is impossible for you. Come on, let's lift it up one time. Y'all lift it up. Say nothing is impossible. Nothing.
everything we have. We're being honest right here, God. We're believing you. Somebody say, I believe you're my portion. You're my portion. God, I Jesus, you're all I need. Jesus, hey. you're all I need. When I look around, you're more than enough for me. Yeah. More than enough for me. Jesus, you're all I need. Jesus, you're all I need. You're more than enough. More than enough. Thank you, Father, for the obedience of your people. Thank you for meeting us with the revelation of your word. Thank you for accepting our worship. Father, we're just a group of people who are going to radically decide to follow you and represent you to the lost and found so that somebody can be transformed in Christ. Thank you that today will mark a moment that will change us forever. Here is holy. Speak lead correct father even if we did what we thought you said go ahead and edit it if you want to god speak lord your servants are listening our hearts are open our hands are open our lives are yours father i thank you for the enemy of our own souls that will come to lie to us that maybe we made the wrong decision today we shut the mouth of the enemy and I thank you, Father, there will be joy unspeakable raising up in your people, Father God, as we obey you the rest of this whole month. And forget the month, the rest of our whole lives. Today, Father God, we are uncuffed from cap. The limit has been raised. And we believe that you can do the impossible. Today, God, we are standing in crazy faith. Do what only you can do. We trust you, we believe you, and we thank you in Jesus' name. I need all the faith-filled people to just give God one more huge, oh, come on, y'all. Let's shout unto God with a voice of triumph. You just broke a limit in your life. Hallelujah. All this week, let's just be obeying God. Until next week, go out and live. A transformed life. Hug somebody. They just gave in crazy faith. Love them. Say, girl, boy, thank you, Jesus. I love y'all. Thank you so much for watching this message. We pray that it encouraged you. We also want to say thank you to our faithful partners and givers here at Transformation Church. It's because of your generosity that this vision has been made possible. If you'd like to partner with us in giving, you can text GIVE to 828282 or you can visit our website. Also, be sure to like, subscribe, and check out our other sermons, as well as our live Sunday experience that begins at 1045 a.m. Central Standard Time. Now go out and live a transformed life.